Muslims are not friends, they're enemies. Ephesians 6.12 says otherwise, they are not the enemy. The real enemy is the one who has them deceived. I don't have Muslim friends for obvious reasons. You should. More opportunity to serve and strengthen your own faith, the way I see it. Why waste time debating a Muslim? Just be a light unto the world. Exactly one year ago, I started this channel. I decided to call it Give Light because that's the entire purpose of what I do here, to give the light of Christ to the entire world. I do understand that quite a bit of the content that I make here is controversial to Muslims, and I want to make something clear. I'm not apologizing for that. But I do come across comments like the ones that I just read fairly often on my videos. There are some who think that because I make content that refutes the Qur'an, that I stand in opposition to Muslim people. I don't stand in opposition to Muslim people. I stand in opposition to Islam. There is an entire world, a spiritual world, that we as humans don't see with our own eyes. Despite this, we still live in it, Christians included. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells us, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. There is an incredibly powerful word that is used in this verse. Can you guess which one it is? The word that I'm referring to is wrestle. The Apostle Paul uses this word as a metaphor to signify that all of us who call on the name of Christ are engaged in warfare. This is why we are commanded to put on the helmet of salvation, the chestplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet preparations of the gospel of peace the sword of the Spirit, which is God's everlasting word, and the shield of faith, which will extinguish every flaming arrow of the evil one. This is the uniform of a Roman soldier, a centurion. We as Christians are daily engaged in a war that takes place in the heavenly realms, but our battle is not against those who are around us. The book of Jude, the shortest book in the Bible, opens with one of the most compelling greetings that we can find throughout the scriptures. To those who are called, sanctified by the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, that's us, Christians, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Jude begins his letter by imparting to us mercy, peace, and and love. He does this to remind us that these are the qualities we are called to live by as the Lord's people. Now pay close attention to this next part. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Jude calls us to contend earnestly for our faith. But what does it mean to contend earnestly? The Greek word that is used here is epagonitsomai. According to the strongest strongs, epagonitsomai means to contend and to fight. In the same manner that Paul uses the analogy of wrestling, Jude uses the Greek word epagonitsomai to describe the spiritual warfare that we are engaged in. At this point, the message is clear. We as Christians are all called to take part in combat. We are called to take up our spiritual armor and head for the front lines, fighting for God's kingdom. Now, as a young man myself, this kind of exhortation, this calling, excites me, but we cannot miss 
the two key lessons behind all of these verses. In the book of 2 Corinthians, we are told, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Here's the first key lesson. We are not at war with people. I, Reese, am not at war with our beloved Muslim friends. I am at war with the ideas and purposes of Islam because they oppose the truth of the gospel. But I am not at war with those who Christ willingly died for on the cross. Think about who the real enemy is. The deceiver, Satan. Now think about how he has tricked so many people who call themselves Christians. There's no doubt that God commands us to engage in spiritual combat. But the real enemy has tricked so many Christians into thinking the people we are supposed to evangelize and love on are the enemy. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. We may walk in the flesh, but we are not engaging our war according to the flesh. Here's the second key lesson. The spiritual weapons that we are equipped with have divine and eternal purposes. The Apostle Paul writes that these weapons we are equipped with are mighty in God and designed to bring down strongholds. The word strongholds is ochiroma in Greek. Ochiroma means stronghold and fortress, but in some cases, it can also be used to mean prison. Think about it from this perspective. As Christians, God has given us the power to bring spiritual prisons down and set the captives free. Now think about our Muslim friends. Not long ago, we learned that Quran chapter 3 verse 54 describes Allah as the greatest of all schemers. However, the word used for schemers in that verse is makir in Arabic. And if you remember, Lane's Arabic lexicon defines makir as he practiced deceit, guile, or circumvention, desiring to do to another a foul, an abominable, or an evil action. Our Muslim friends are held in bondage to a God who calls himself the greatest of all deceivers. These people whom God loves and died for on the cross, are not the enemy. They are the prisoners of the enemy. And we are called to go out and wage war against that enemy, setting the prisoners free. Why waste time debating a Muslim? The answer is simple. It's because the human soul knows no time. We are all created in the image of our timeless Father in Heaven, who desires all men to be saved. Stop casting your pearls to the swine. On the contrary, there is more joy in Heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over ninety-nine others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. Muslims are not friends, they're enemies. How can we ever call anyone an enemy for which Jesus was hanged on the cross? The next time you see or talk to a Muslim, remember my face. I used to be one of them. I used to be a prisoner to the same spiritual strongholds they are held captive to. And here I am now waging a spiritual war against those very strongholds alongside you, giving light, the light of Christ, to the entire world.
Until next time, Salam.